All right. Oh, thank God you're here. Oh, thank God I need you so much. I was going to say, was it something I said, but I haven't said anything yet. No, right, no, exactly. No. <laughs> I, listen, I've been going crazy because I'm like, I don't know how this is not just the top story, but the only story in the news. Uh, Jen Rubin, our mutual mm-hmm. friend, I'm sure, tweets, after the Eastman sedition memo, I don't see how DOJ avoids prosecuting Trump and accomplices. I mean, I don't either. Not just the now we have the new story, Trump campaign, new lawyers, voting machine claims were baseless. I, yeah. Glenn, tell us legally, because us lay people are just like, how is a coup just OK? And we go, oh, well, it didn't work. Let's move on. Yeah, Steph, I did my uh, Justice Matters video last night on this precise question, because people are looking at this reporting, whether it is the six point John Eastman, you know, uh, how to overthrow a democracy for dummies memo or reporting that we now know that even before Rudy and and the Kraken lady started to lie to the American people and file these suits in court, these fraudulent lawsuits attacking the election results, the Trump campaign itself had generated an internal memo saying we know all these things are lies. So people are looking at this stuff and they're like, well, this is just more of the same, right? And the answer is yes. It's more of the same incriminating evidence that should have been used long ago to indict Trump and company for trying to overthrow our democracy, for trying to unconstitutionally retain power. So I am sitting here scratching my head wondering, why is it that the the Department of Justice has not moved out? Public safety hangs in the balance. Our democracy hangs in the balance. There's more than enough evidence to prosecute. And from the Department of Justice, we hear crickets. And I I wish I had an explanation for that, Steph, but I don't. So this memo, just so people know that you mentioned, Glenn, it rebutted a series of allegations that Sidney Powell and others were making in public. Uh, It found that Dominion did not use voting technology from the software company Smartmatic in the 2020 election, that Dominion had no direct ties to Venezuela or to Mr. Soros. There was no evidence that Dominion's leadership had connections to left-wing Antifa activists, as Ms. Powell and others had claimed. So, again, I I assume there's legal liability in that, again, but these are part of civil lawsuits, right, with Dominion and others. But, again, I just, all of these stories, I'm like, how is there not criminal culpability for this, for the Eastman memo, for a, a roadmap that they wrote out to subvert the Constitution and overthrow the government of the United States. It's a blueprint for seditious conspiracy. That's why I say I don't understand why we haven't seen indictments already handed down by a federal grand jury. And, you know, yes, these are civil matters. So some of this information is being released as a result of civil litigation. But guess what? It can also be used as evidence in a criminal trial. It's not like there is some wall between evidence that's developed or disclosed as part of civil litigation and criminal prosecutions. There's cross-pollination all the time. So it's more of the same. It's more incriminating evidence. And Steph, as I sit here, I still have to believe the Department of Justice is working on all of this. They're probably trying to, you know, wrap it up as the most beautiful gift with the prettiest bow, such that when the indictment drops, there is no wiggle room. There's no argument to be made that somehow the proof that Donald Trump committed buku crimes is lacking. I can only hope that's what's going on behind the scenes at the department. Well, Glenn, as you always say, if you don't, it's a roadmap to continue. And he's just last week, didn't he wrote again to the secretary of state of Georgia and said, you know, decertify, announce the true winner, which is me. I I mean, what is he doing? Is that just insanity that that there's still he's under active investigation in Georgia and he's doing it again? Yeah. Steph, him talking about his crimes in the harsh light of day has worked for him thus far. So that statement actually made sense to me because how he will try to use it, he will fail, but how he will try to use it is say, look, I'm still still saying this stuff publicly, which is an indication that I don't think it's wrong, it's corrupt, it's unlawful. If, If I did think those things, I wouldn't be saying them out loud. No, you're saying them out loud because you're trying to fool the gullible, those are the only ones who are going to be fooled, into believing you don't have criminal intent. You have criminal intent 
all day long, and somebody's just got to get these charges in front of a jury. So <clears throat> you got to get your take on the, you know, filing a lawsuit against New York Times and Mary Trump. Of course, Mary Trump says the walls are closing in. Right. He's desperate. Again, I don't know if she's, you, you tweeted more indictments coming from New York DA Vance per today's hearing in Weisselberg Trump Organization court case. The big ticket question, who's up next for indictment? Might their last name be Trump? I mean, you never know. He all He's the king of distractions. So let's get your take on the New York Times Mary Trump lawsuit. And what's that and the, where the Weisselberg case is? Yeah, I, I love that. And I love what Mary Trump has been doing, speaking the truth about her uncle. Yeah. Let's connect a couple of dots here, because from an old prosecutor's perspective, here's how I see the Mary Trump lawsuit. This thing could have been filed months, if not a year or more ago yes. by Donald Trump. When was it filed? Immediately after the Alan Weisselberg hearing, at which Weisselberg's own lawyers said, we are expecting mm -hmm. more indictments to come. So what does Donald Trump do? Oh, I have to sue Mary, my niece, because that's where apparently lots of these tax documents got generated yeah. and turned right. over to from the New York Times. a year Times. ago, from this a year ago, me, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. This to me feels like a move that is directly in response to a threat of indictment from the New York district attorney. Those two things have to be related. And Eric Trump lawyers quitting. Significant. Yeah. <laughs> Seems kind of weird timing again. Right? Yeah. And lawyers quit for really one of three reasons. Either they're not getting paid, but let me let me add a footnote to that because just because you're if you hire a lawyer and then you're not paying the lawyer, that lawyer can typically not uh, walk away from the case. The judge will say, listen, this is a contractual problem between lawyer and client. That doesn't mean you can up and walk off the case and disrupt the schedule that the court has set. Now, I know Eric's not in court yet, but one reason a lawyer can walk away is because he's not getting paid, but that doesn't always work. The other reason is there's a conflict because now, you know, the, the lawyer has dual loyalties, one to Eric and one to somebody else he might have represented. And then the third is if you're a lawyer and you know your client is about to do something illegal, you are duty bound ethically to walk off the case, to, uh -huh. to quit the case. So I don't know what prompted it, but any of those scenarios are not good for Eric. Yeah. So uh, you're, a couple of your other tweets piqued my interest. Um, you said perhaps we the people should set up a tip line and ask the 4,500 individuals who provided the 4,500 tips to the FBI uh, against Brett Kavanaugh um, to provide them yeah. again so that we the people can assess Kavanaugh's ability to serve on the Supreme Court and decide whether women will retain their constitutional rights or not. Um, and you said on 12-1 the Supreme Court will hold a case that will give Brett Kavanaugh the chance to revoke the constitutional privacy rights of all women, not just those in Texas. Yet we still know nothing about what disqualifying information uh, may be in the 4,500 tips the FBI FBI has. Um, Sheldon Whitehouse seems like the only senator that's been talking about this, that we need a real investigation of someone with a lifetime appointment uh, and not the sham that the FBI did. Yeah, you can probably sense my frustration in those tweets, Steph. I'm yeah. beginning to feel like we the people need an investigative unit. If the FBI is not on our side, is unwilling to investigate the suitability of a guy like Brett Kavanaugh, to be a Supreme Court justice and to be in a position, which he is now in, to revoke the constitutional privacy rights of all women, not, not just women in Texas, which he has already done. Don't we the people have some interest in understanding whether he was you know, uh, uh, suited to be a Supreme Court justice in the first instance? Why can't some organization, if I had an organization behind me, I would, I would do this. Why can't some organization simply say, hey, 4,500 citizens who provided those tips, do me a favor, forward the email to us that you forwarded to the FBI or take a screenshot of the text that you sent to the FBI or share with us the content if it was just a phone call to the FBI. So maybe we the people can have our own investigative unit and start to assess this for ourselves because the FBI won't give it to us. The White House has not been willing to release it, even though that's where the 4,500 tips were delivered to Trump's White House yeah. counsel. Presumably, they're still there. And Congress doesn't seem all that enthusiastic about subpoenaying the 4,500 tips. Maybe we, the people, need our own investigative unit. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is getting frustrating. So we played Adam Schiff right before you came on. Um, lastly, before you go, Glenn, just your take on the... Um, 
Democrats begin effort to curb post-Trump presidential powers. They're planning to introduce a package of proposed new limits on executive power, beginning a post-Trump push to strengthen checks on the presidency that they hope will compare to the overalls following Watergate and Vietnam. Um, I'm all for stopping future crime. I'd like to get, uh, <laughs> just, yeah. I'd like to, you know, finish up with the crime that happened in the past where all crime happened first. But uh, what do you, what's your take on that? Yeah, Donald Trump and company, his cabinet members, his family members didn't obey our laws the first time around, and we have not yet held them accountable. So, Steph, do you think the answer is let's put more laws on the book for future presidents to ignore? That makes zero sense to me. I'm not saying we don't need to shore up the weak spots in our system of government. I'm all for it. But first, you have to address past crime and corruption if you are to deter future crime and corruption. Yeah. Yes. I mean, again, starting with the Eastman memo and all of this, you know, uh, uh, coup attempt. Um, real quick, I just I have to ask, as they're saying they're ramping up subpoenas, et cetera, the January 6th commission. What happens legally with that? This is why you and I keep saying this feels like there needs to be criminal DOJ. In, this is not I don't know what happens with the January 6th, whatever their findings are. What are they? Legally, just findings, yeah. right? So, so you know, two different mandates, the January 6th Select Committee and the Department of Justice. There's a lot of overlap with respect to the subject matter that they're going to be investigating. But it's also, they're not mutually exclusive. So the J6, um, not to be confused with the J6 rally attended by dozens of people. Mm-hmm. So if the, if the J6 Select Committee finds things that they believe are are criminal, they can certainly refer those to the Department of Justice. But the Department of Justice, I'm sure, has investigations up and running into everything insurrection related. So there's a lot of overlap. But but here's the key. If the uh, if the select committee starts to issue subpoenas and people refuse to comply with the subpoenas, for God's sakes, flex your muscle Mm -hmm. and use the tools available to you to enforce those subpoenas because that's where the rubber meets the road. Yeah, absolutely. Captain America, I love you. <laughs> love you too, Steph. <laughs> See you next time. All right, there he goes. My, my hero.